dear my brother and my sister, dear my brethren, we need to encourage one another with the word of God. And this time we want to talk about faith in God and the power of God. How many times have you doubted God? How many times have you limited the power of God? How many times have you limited the power of Christ? Have you been in a situation where you see maybe God is not there? Have you been in a situation where you are praying and see maybe God is not answering? Have you gone through a situation or you have something with you, in front of you, or in your situation, or in a challenges, you are going through a challenge, or something happened to you and you see no way, there's no way out. There's a time you see it's so dark, you don't see end anywhere. You see like you're in a hole, a hole that you cannot see the end. You're thrown in a hole, a deep hole. You cannot see the end where you come out, how you can come out. Have you been in a situation where you don't see the, the, where you are going to end? Are you in a desert where you, you are thinking, where will I get water? And you're in a wilderness, in a forest where you don't know where you can come out. Many of the time we limit the power of God. But I want to tell you this time, my brother, my sister, the power of God is unlimited. The power of God is limitless. So this time we want to read the word of God in the book of John chapter number 11 and verse 35. The Bible says that Jesus wept. So we want to ask ourselves this time, why did Jesus cry? Why did Jesus wept? I want to review back the verses before that. Uh, this is about Lazarus who was dead and Jesus was in a town and when he was told when you read from verse 1, he was in a town somewhere near there, but he was told that Lazarus is dead. And he was told by the Mary. The Mary is that is the woman who had anointed Jesus with his, uh, uh, his feet with oil. He's, he loved Lazarus and he told him, your friend Lazarus is dead. Now you ask yourself, why did Jesus cry? So when Jesus was told about Lazarus is dead, he delayed to go there for two more days. And when you read in verse number four, it says that when Jesus, when he had this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, no it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved mother and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. So I want to emphasize on verse number four, where Jesus said, this death or this sickness is not end in death. Because you see, uh, Mary said his, um, his brother is sick. But Jesus said it will not end in death. He's not going to die completely. It is for glory of God. I want to tell you, my brother, my sister, out there that God sometimes allows some situation to happen to your life with a reason and with a purpose. Some things happen to your life with a reason, with a purpose. You may pass through situation and this is for the glory of God. You may pass through challenges through circumstances. You may face a mountain, but this is for the glory of God because God wants to see himself in that situation. He wants to reveal himself. He wants to manifest his power and ability and dispensation of his power in that situation. Some things you may go through is for the glory and honor of God. You may be going through a problem, but I tell you, it may be for the glory of God that God wants to be glorifying himself in that situation and keep trusting him and he will come at 11 hour and he is able and able than all our other 
is above all nature, above all power, above all kingdom. Sometimes we go through trials and tribulation. It is, we should take its pure joy that they raise us from one glory to the other. So, when you read in verse 11, it says that after he had this, he went to tell them, our friend Lazaro fell asleep, but I'm going there to wake him. But the disciples still didn't understand Jesus. Lazaro was already dead, but they thought he's talking about normal sleep. So they said he, he wake up, but he was speaking about his death. And in verse 14, he tell them, completed that he's dead. But he's, he, Jesus said that he's happy that they are with him, that he died when they are away. They may see that Jesus can resurrect him. Uh, when you look at verse 21, it says that, Lord, is now mother telling Jesus, Lord, mother said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. So mother is now, Lazarus is dead, but we see that mother is limiting the power of Christ. He's limiting the power of Christ. He thought that Jesus is his faith to Jesus was to the point of healing level. So, because Jesus was delayed to come and Lazarus is dead, so his faith on Jesus came to an end because he saw Jesus like a, a healer. And now he's forgetting here, he's forgetting that Jesus is a resurrector. Now, that's why he's saying that, Lord, Mother said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now you will give whatever you ask. And we see a number of verses that Mother is still doubting. Jesus later told Mother that, uh, I'm the resurrection and the life. In verse, um, in verse 23, it says that, your brother will rise again. That Jesus is talking about now. Now. The, the, the Lazaro will rise again at that point in time. But uh, mother said that I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last days. So he's still not seeing Jesus like a resurrector. He's seeing Jesus as a hero. His faith was finished at the point of the death of Lazaro. But now he can't see Jesus. He can't say, how many times have you doubted the power of God? How many times have you reached a situation then you can't see God anymore? I'm telling you tonight at uh, this time that God is able even over whatever has happened at this point in time. You don't see God at a certain level, but he has no level of his ability to work in our life, I tell you. So in verse 25 that Jesus tell mother that he is the resurrection and the life and whoever believe in him he shall have internal life and shall shall not die but a mother still doubting verse 27 he saying i believe that you are the christ the son of god who was to come into the world so mother is still doubting even at this point in time and later jesus went and when he was almost there mother spoke to Mary, her sister, and she went to meet Jesus. And when the, the mother, Mary also doubted, and she said, uh, she also said that if you are here, not if you are here, Mary said, if you are here, my brother would not have died, which is verse 33, uh, not, not verse 3, but verse 32, Mary said, Lord, if you are here, verse 32, if you are here, my brother will not have died. So even the Mary is still doubting. He's seeing Jesus as a healer. And when Jesus was almost there, when Mary went to meet Jesus, even the mourners who had come there for, for, for lamentation, they followed Mary and they all crying because Jesus was right. He didn't come on time to, to heal Lazarus. So mourners were crying. Mary was crying. Mother was crying. Everybody was crying. So Jesus was moved in spirit. And he later wept. So why did Jesus cry? Was he crying because they are crying? Was he crying because everybody is crying? Jesus was moved in spirit. Jesus wept because he see these people are doubting my faith. They are my power. They are doubting. 
they are, I'm here, I'm a resurrector, but they, they are saying me, I should have come early and heal Lazaro. He's crying and moved because of their unlimited faith, of their limited faith, of their doubting faith. He's crying because they are not seeing the power of God. They are limiting the power of God. I tell you, if you have faith, faith touches God. Remember the woman who touched the garment of Jesus. Jesus felt something came out because faith touches God. Have faith and you will touch God and he will move in your situation. He was crying because of lack of their faith. And in verse 39, Mother was still doubting. He was told, remove the stone. Then he said, he's already smearing and in the tomb for four days. He's still uh, doubting. And Jesus still mourning, almost crying again. And the time they, he told them, I told you believe I can resurrect. I'm resurrecting the life. I believe he can come out of the dead. And the time they believe and remove the stone, that's when Jesus was able to resurrect Lazaro. So I tell you, Jesus... Uh, he can do anything in your situation so long as you have faith. He's on the door knocking. He's knocking. He's want to enter into a situation. You want to enter into our life. You want to enter into your family. You want to enter in your, in your aspiration, in your desire. You want to enter in whatever you want him to do. But if you open your door in your life, he'll come and dine with you and, and do great things in you. And when they remove the stone, that's when Jesus was able to heal to resurrect Lazaro and say, Lazaro, come out. Jesus had power, so he had to specify Lazaro. He could not say, come out, otherwise other people could have risen because he has power over the death, but he has to specify Lazaro, come out. And Lazaro came out of the dead. So what do we learn from this situation, from this, this uh, verse, verses of John chapter 11? Uh, we learn that faith can move God and power of God is unlimited. And do you limit power of God in a situation? I tell you, the power of God is unlimited. How many times have you lowered the ability of God to work in your life? I tell you, he has no limit. His power is limitless. I tell you, trust in Jesus and he's going to do great things in your life. He can raise whatever situation that is dead in you. He can raise whatever circumstance that is dead. Whatever is dead, or he raise it. It doesn't matter how many days it has been died. Jesus showed his power over all kinds of death. He showed the power to resurrect the window son who had just died. When you look, read in the book of Luke chapter number 7. And he also showed the ability to raise the Jairus daughter who was already dead. So he, Jairus' daughter has just died, but the window son had died. The window son had already died and almost to the burial way, but he was resurrected. He was, she, he was on the way to burial. And Lazaro, we see here, is dead, buried, and stay in the pool for four days and rotten. So God has power over all dead circumstances. It doesn't matter how many years they have been dead. He can lift them up. He has power over all kinds of death. Faith touches God. I speak blessing. Trust in God and you will live. You see the power of God working in you. Walk with Jesus and he will do great, exceedingly great things within you. A power of our God is unlimited. Do not limit the power of God. Whatever situation you are going through, I tell you, God can manifest himself in that situation. There is no mountain that he cannot move. There is no problem that he cannot solve. Trust in him and he will manifest, walk with you. He is the way, the truth and the life. You who believe in him will have eternal life. If you have not known God, Trust in him and you will never be ashamed. You have peace of mind in all days of your life. You have peace of the heart. You will be satisfied. The blessing of God are absolute. I speak blessing in your life. Lord, I bless somebody there. I pray for anybody out there who has a dead situation, who has a situation where he is limiting your power. Father, you have power of all kinds of death. You have power 
is limited. You, your ability to work in our life is limitless. You have no level. We cannot uh, finish our faith on you on different situations. Father, I speak whoever out there who has situation or dead situation, situation he doesn't know, he's in a hole, he doesn't know how to come out. I speak healing and resurrect whatever situation may be going through. Meet everyone at the point of his need. I speak blessing to everyone out there who is need you, who need your power, who need your manifestation. Manifest yourself in anyone out there who has need that he don't know how to solve it. Meet it at the point of his need, Father. In Jesus' name, your power is unlimited. May you give us power and ability to walk with you and trust in you and walk with faith that can move mountains, Father. Jesus, we know that faith touches you. Give us faith that we may touch you all the time, that we may shake all the power of the death and the evil one. Father, I speak blessing. I speak hearing to any out there who is sick, Father. Resurrect whoever has a situation that is dead. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Be blessed.